Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to another episode of the Views from the Friend Zone podcast. It's your boy, Real Talk Mall. I have two guests in the building. One of the guests is returning from last week, but I'm going to have him introduce himself. It's your boy, Cliff Brock, but now. How about this beautiful young lady? Amanda Haynes. Tell us a little about yourself, Amanda. <laughs> well, um, I went to culinary school, so I'm a chef. I also make candles as well, soy candles. Yeah. Um, I bake cakes. Yeah, your cakes be looking great. Thank you. I eat a lot. <laughs> but you I'm look really good. greedy. So. But yes, um, yeah, that's it. That's what's up. So mm-hmm. I'm just coming back from uh, Poconos. I was celebrating my wife's birthday. I want to give a shout out to my beautiful wife. Her birthday was August 3rd, you know, Leo gang. So shout out to her. I want to shout out a couple of Leos real quick. You know, my boy Leon. My boy, um, Winston, Deidre, Cheryl. I'm going to forget a couple of Leos, you know what I'm saying? But I'm a Leo, too. My birthday is next Thursday, so I got to give the Leo love, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to jump right into it. So I was talking to someone and um, just asking them about relationships, right? And then the person told me that, you know, they're not in love with their baby mother no more, but they're committed to her. And then I was talking to somebody else, and they was just like, you know, I love my shorty, but, you know, I just can't commit. I like new flavors and stuff like that. So it made me think, damn, two situations where someone's with their child's mother, they're in a relationship, but it's like they're in a relationship for two different reasons. So the first topic is, is love a feeling or commitment? And we always like to have ladies go first, right? So, (laughs) So, you know, so... Is, is love a feeling or a commitment? And the first, like, sub-question is, do people stay in relationships because of love or because of a commitment? That's a great question. Um, I think love is a feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, is it a commitment? It could be. It all depends on, you know, what we're talking about here. Um, relationship-wise, I feel like love should be, like, breathing. It shouldn't be, like, committed, like a commitment. Sometimes when you hear the word commitment, a lot of people run from it. Yeah. That word is like really scary yeah. to some people, or whatever. Um, I believe that it should be a feeling. It's sure. definitely a feeling. What do you think? Um, I agree with that. I definitely agree yeah. with that. I think love is a little bit of both. Yeah. It's a feeling and a commitment, right? Because you can learn to love somebody off of the commitment they did in the past or, or the present. You understand? Mm-hmm. Maybe certain things or aspects they put themselves in certain situations like when you first start a relationship you get to know somebody mm-hmm. and you might know he might he might start up great or she might start up great the representative the rep- yeah, representative exactly mm-hmm. and then when you find out everything like <laughs> you, you kind of st- take a step back right yeah but then when also when you say find out everything what do you mean by find out everything you know when, when the warts start showing up you yeah, know what I'm saying find out everything I, I think the realest, about, thing, like, the realest thing the realest thing a couple could do early is the first time the female farts in front of you. I was going to say. All right, wait a minute. <laughs> that's the first <laughs> no, time I it gets mean, real. That's I what mean. I mean by like everything. What are we finding out? You're finding out that she's a the psycho. Floors. You're finding out that she farts in a sleep. Yeah, the realness. Like, just everything. The she added, sleeps the with the a attitude, bonnet. You know, <laughs> the attitude. The, just the little things, you know. So I think it's a little bit of both. It just... It, it plays in with both because I think it's about love is also about growing with somebody, right? So yes. you, it's a little bit of both, I think. And, and you know what? The, the, the big thing about that is like, you know, the love versus commitment thing. To me, is just like, you know, I'm committed to my wife, but I'm also in love with my wife. Like if, if the love, no, no, but seriously, if the love was gone, there's no make sense what to, makes to love have that gone? commitment. Like, what, how does love leave? Is like you said, love is a feeling. Life? Love is a feeling, right? And uh-huh. sometimes that feeling goes away because of for different how? reasons. How could it go away if you're like be, be, in because love? Because it's like, you know, everyone who's in love knows that loves have, you know, peaks and valleys. So love is not always easy. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it's just like, you know, when you realize that, you know, I'm, I no longer have a passion for this person. I no longer see myself growing old with this person. That's but sometimes... Mm-hmm. You know, the love goes away, but you're like, you know, damn, she put 10 years in the game. She put 15 yeah, in the game. Exactly. How am I going to drop her? You know no, what I'm saying? So that's where the thing. commitment outweighs the love. I would exactly. drop you in a heartbeat <laughs> if I felt like that. We can be together for 20 years. If I'm not happy, I'm gone. Like, that's, that's how it should be. Happiness comes first. I heard someone say that, you know, they met someone 
when they used to be in a certain crowd, like they used to party a lot, mm -hmm. or they used to do drugs and stuff like that. And then when they stopped moving in that crowd or moving that way, they realized like, I love that person because we had that same wave. But now that I'm not doing that anymore, I realize me and this person, Could you we get don't that rock. person on the same wave though? You can, but that's about growth, right? People outgrow each other sometimes. That's you true. know, we grew up since elementary school. Mm -hmm. How many people do you still rock with from back in the day? <laughs> not, not many, right? Facebook, not many. Facebook allowed us to reconnect with certain people, but yeah. then now, as an adult, you realize like, yo, that person's not who I thought they were. You right. know what I'm saying? So exactly. you outgrow people. And then to piggyback um, what more was just saying, also, um, it's also people get comfortable, right? Yeah. A lot of people get comfortable. So when you get comfortable, you stop doing the things that put you in the position to love that person, right? Yeah. So when you first caught in a man or a woman, when you first caught in that guy, you I might come home, you might have dinner ready, you might automatically put on lingerie. I didn't even expect it. Now I come home, you got the hair rag on, you like I'm tired. Granny panty. I'm Granny tired. Panties. I'm tired. <laughs> the sweatpants <laughs> with the string don't tie no more. It's, it's not happening today, okay? You know, it's Tuesday, a long day. You know, so, so it's, it's it, different aspects of To, different to answer the sub question, do you think more people stay in love, stay in relationships because of love or because of commitment? Convenience. Convenience, not some even people, love or commitment. Some people, they live together and it's like, okay, well, rent is 500 for me, 500 from you. People don't. <laughs> yeah, they're financial. <laughs> That's a fact. Financial. Is, a big, some a dudes, some dudes get into relationships just to have a place to put yeah, a roof over their head. Ladies do it too. So yeah. it's just like, it could be for and, that as well. And to piggyback what you're saying, Amanda, right? That, which is, you made a perfect point, but also comfortable. You're comfortable. Yeah. It's, let, let's be idea. We're all in our 30s, right? It's so hard to say. Yeah, we're right in now. our 30s. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I'll be, uh, you, you should uh, never <laughs> shot off somebody a woman's so, age, but go so ahead. Sorry about no, that. No, we're in our 30s. I'm, I, I'm I, not ashamed. Uh, so I'm, I'm in my 30s. I'm not, I'm not scared of it. I'm in my 30s. But it's so hard to start over. So a lot of people. It's, it's very it's, hard it's, to start over. Let me, let me just elaborate on that a little bit and I'm yeah. going to let you go. It's so hard to start over. So you sometimes, even when you're not in love with that person anymore, you're like, you know what? I know this person. I know it's ins and out. So, so you're you committed to the convenience. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, it's like, you know, I know we build relationships, and then sometimes we start to share bills, and we start to share certain obligations. Last week we spoke about, you know, Sometimes we address the obligations that you have as a couple, but we don't address the personal needs. You know what I'm saying? So right. now you say more relationships. I think more relationships stay out of convenience. Commitment. Definitely, definitely out of convenience. I have a so question, if all though. things, if all uh -huh. things are equal, right? Uh -huh. You good? Money's not a problem. If you needed to bounce, you could set. Up, you could start over. Mm -hmm. You know, what would keep you in a relationship if love starts to dwindle? That's hard. I don't stay. I will leave. Like I said, I'll leave fast if I feel like a love is gone and so if I address the it to you and we can't get it back and you feel the same way and we're just like, I don't even want to try anymore, then I'm out. So if the love goes, right, uh -huh. how do you work on it? Because if the commitment is not enough to keep you in a relationship, uh -huh. how do you work on the love? Well, I think that you have to work on the things that got you guys together in the first place. The things that made you guys fall in love in the first place. So, I don't know. What made you fall in love with your wife? Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh look at that. Your first answer should but, be, what? But first of all, not, look at that big What could oh, I not love like, about the wife? <laughs> no, well, nah, honestly, what, what made me fall in love with my wife is her commitment. Like, we had a long distance relationship, and she literally made a long distance relationship seem like we were together at all times. So I knew her driving. She put in that work. She put, listen. That's dope. She put in that. I'm, I'm an old school Haitian man. I always say that. Like, I'm old school Haitian. I'm not new generation. I'm old school. So she put in a lot of work where she, she made it happen. She, That's she beautiful. knew what she wanted. And she said to herself, you know what? I'm going to marry this man. And now we got a beautiful daughter. So Very it's all, it's, daughter. it's all about, it's all about growth in the process of it. I think sometimes. We got to go back to the drawing board, right? Yeah, and, and, exactly. And go back to the Find drawing board. Find out what caused you guys what to be in love you, and revisit that's it. That's exactly what I said. Again. You yeah. have to revisit that. And then also with love, you got to be friends too. That's very Absolutely. important. Absolutely. If mm -hmm. you're not friends, 
you, it's, you got to feel comfortable enough to be you could discuss anything. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's, you got to go back to the drawing board. That's, that's, that's and just that's what my, that's what I think. To answer your question that uh-huh. you asked him, like what made me fall in love with my wife was, is like, I have a lot of things that are different or quote unquote weird. I like certain things and she liked the same things that I like and we laugh and joke. Mm-hmm. About everything, you know. I think we that's can how see, it's supposed to be. We can see people, <clears throat> not to be grimy, but like we could laugh at, you know, things people are doing or make up stories about people, and 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 we just have certain jokes. Like for instance, we saw the movie The Dark Tower. How right? was that? Uh, I wasn't really. Mm, I thought it was yeah. good, but the funny thing about it was, it's like uh, Idris Alba. Spoiler alert: Idris Alba. Like, is it an, Idris? Or my wife's favorite. Idris, that's my wife's favorite too. <laughs> Idris, 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 I don't know. Idris. But to um, after someone helps him and stuff like that, he uh, g- you know, takes gold coins out of his pockets and says, "Thank you for your service." And that's mm-hmm. and it, that we was joked, we was been joking all weekend, mm-hmm. like you know, that's a new thing for us. So you know, I did something nice for us. She said, "Here, thank you for your service." That's cute. And we just start laughing and joking Aww. all weekend, and we do little corny things like that. And I say that to bring it back in is just that you know. When you love someone, it's not about, you know, how good sex is Definitely. or how good they look mm-hmm. or, or, or the things that they can do for you. It's just the things that, the, how much that person makes you want to be a better person, how much you want to continue to make that person happy. And I guess you, I would say I'm committed to making her happy. Right. So that's the commitment I have in my relationship. And, and you know, and she works on making me happy as well. So, um... Were you going to say something that cut you off? Because I want to go to the next. The, the next question is, it's, it's kind of <laughs> a continuation of this, right? It's, can you love someone completely and not be in a committed relationship? Or can you be committed to someone you don't love? Like we said that it happens sometimes, but as, a, as an individual, I'm going to get to you. As an individual, can you love someone completely, but you're just not doing the commitment thing? Or can you be committed to somebody because of something but not be in love with them. Mm-hmm. Like people, let me give an example, right? Like, you know, some, some people say like, you know, I'll be Oprah's side chick or side dude or whatever, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Financial I'll be committed reason. to her because uh-huh. she's going to take care of me, but Financial. we won't be in love. Or can you love someone like, yo, our, our wave is beautiful and stuff like that, but you know this person is not the commit, commitment type, but you still love them. You love them wholeheartedly. And you continue that relationship just knowing that, you know what, this person not ready to commit, but I can rock with this relationship for a little while. No. So you, I'm either, in it for the commitment or. and love. I'm not going to just date you and you're not ready for a commitment. I'm wasting my time when I could meet somebody so great that's ready for the things that I want. You know what but I mean? sometimes someone's that train ride until you get to that stop. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it is. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to. I want to say about that. that. I, but you know what? You can. You can. I think do that because a lot of times relationships. Sometimes you just stay just because of the kids. I can never if do that. Situation. I, I know. I know of, plenty of, time, of dudes. I know. Plenty I know, of, just I know a lot of. A lot of. A lot of females say, you know what? I don't love this dude, whatever. But I know That's he's my child father. He's, he's my a child good father, father, and he's a good father. And I don't want to lose that connection he has with my son or daughter. So they sa- <laughs> so they sa- no no real talk. no I so, do. So I they do. sacrifice their self to say, you know what? For the greater good, greater good of the kids. Real talk. Yes. I love my father to death. But my mom stayed with my dad, and this is not. She loved him, she but loved you know, it, was but it was tough times. It was tough times. times. But and, and, and you know the old school, the old school mentality is people don't like us. Our generation, I would say, maybe the generation before us, but not our parents' generation. Mm-hmm. I call generations every five, ten years, right? And. Divorces are easy. Yeah. It's, it's like getting out of yes. your cell phone contract now. You know what I'm saying? You try for two years, yeah, it don't work out. I break out my contract. You know um, what I'm saying? So okay. it's like it's like But you're sacrificing your happiness when you stay exactly. with someone just for the children. But sometimes I listen, could not be listen, like how that. many people no, I'm not to cut you, I'm sorry. Good. How many women we know uh-huh. in the industry in in the world who are messing with dudes that they kinda know is gay? But they just want to have a man. He has a lot of good qualities to him, but there's a lot of suspect things going on with mm. that dude. You that's know, a whole other subject. That is a whole other subject. But that's that's a form of being committed to someone, but not necessarily being in love. Like he's a good provider. You know, he's a good father to my child. Like Clifford was saying, he looks good. But you know, 
he not really into you like that. He might be into and, somebody and, else. And, and, and that's a, 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 a majority of relationships right now sometimes, a lot of relationships right now, that's going on. And you don't even know, not just for the kids or certain things that person is doing and you don't want to lose that. So you mm-hmm. stay with the person. And it happens for years. How many times? That's true. I've been, I, how many times you've been in a relationship and it just dragged, but you know, like, oh, I really, he's so good. He's doing this. He's so good. This. He, you might be using for financial. You might even just be using him for sex. He might could just lay the pipe. But, and then you just stick around and then you realize, you know, expiration dates is over. Could you be committed to good pipe? That's no. a question that you, no. you have to answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Good pipe has nothing to do with, uh, it has nothing to do with my happiness. Like, yeah. I mean, it's going to okay. make me happy, but I'm not going to sacrifice everything else. Everything has to fall in place. I'm a Libra. I need balance. So good pipe, but you're an asshole. Like, you know, I'm not, I need everything to be on one level. I have to be balanced out. Good pipe is not going to keep so, me. So like, you know, the love thing, maybe can you love someone and be like in an open relationship? Where no, like, I don't share. No I'm selfish. You no open share. nothing. It's my pipe. That's my pipe. That's it. <laughs> okay. Could you be in an open... We kind of spoke about that last week, but could you love someone and be in an open relationship? No, nah, I couldn't do it, because... You want somebody sharing your vagina? Well, no, not your, it, your, no I don't want nobody sharing. Just period, like, with me, I, I'm the type of person, I like to do things accordingly. So if, if it doesn't work the way I want it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fluster me, so I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, right? I How about you? It. Could I you share your vagina? I couldn't... Sh- this... Obviously, I'm already in a committed marriage, mm-hmm. so this is a, a disclaimer as, like, if I wasn't of in this course. situation. Right. I could, I could be in that kind of a situation for a time being. Like, say, for instance, for some reason I got divorced, I'm single, and stuff like that. I wouldn't jump into a long-term relationship right, okay. right after. I'm going to be married in, for 10 years. In, in 2019, will be my 10 years for being married. So I'm in eight, I'm eight years now. I say that to say this. After doing almost a dime or 15 years or whatever God willing I want it to be the rest of my life, if I get out of that relationship, I'm not looking to jump into another 10, 20 off the rip. Okay. So for a while, I could, I could dig someone. We don't have to be exclusive as long as we kind of explain to each other like, yo. This is what it I'm is. Do, this and this. We got to stay protected because, you know, I'm out here taking chances and stuff like that. I could, I, could rock with, like, I could rock like that for a while. I can even love that person like I really love that person. That's crazy. Until until I'm ready mm-hmm. to be like, yo, all right, we got to cut this out. It's just me and you kind of thing. Oh, okay. Oh. So stand by, pussy. Oh, that's oh. What about the other things that come like, with okay, a relationship let me hit that's it not when sex? I need it. So, like, all right, so but you mean it like could be the person. I, we could travel together. We could see shows. We could do all these other that's things. That's dope, but that's a lot of mixed signals going on right there. But if we're both discussing it as adults and yeah. having that communication, because uh-huh. I don't want to say friends with benefits or things like that. I want to be like, yo, we really getting to know each other, but right now we're not committed. So, if you want to have fun, have fun. If I want to have fun, I want to have fun. Okay, so you're dating, but not exclusively dating. Yeah, and I could, I could but I could do okay. that for a year or two. If, you know, I, because I already had the marriage thing, you okay. know what I'm saying? So, God forbid, if that didn't work out and stuff like that, I'm not dying to have that. It's like, oh, man, I need to be married again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, sometimes you just need someone to rock with you until you build and grow for a little while. Okay. Not necessarily friends with benefits. I think the open relationship only works... When both party agrees to the term, absolutely yeah. if right. If both parties don't agree to the term, mm-hmm. open relationship ain't gonna work. It's not gonna it work. It can't be on some. I'm gonna do this. You gonna do this. It gotta be a straight down the middle. This is how it's playing. This is how it's going. And this is how everything's gonna side. That's how it's gonna work. Other than that, it's not an open relationship. It's gonna drive somebody. You, you both gonna go crazy mm-hmm. because the communication is not is lacking now. Now you find out. If you found out she was messing with Steve, Kevin, and Richard when she just told you about yeah. Steve and Kevin. You know yeah. what I mean? You, you didn't know about Richard yeah. until somebody else found out. See, this him. is why I can't so, share. You can't be dipping in the other vaginas. But that's and what, I, but, but but that's what like, I'm that's saying. That's disgusting. How many, I, I how many times it. we hear about a woman being a ride or die woman, she's cool to her dude, so she invites another female into the situation for a threesome? Thinking that it's going to be a one-time thing. Mm-hmm. And now her man's contacting Shorty behind her back, and they're doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole that happens all the too. time. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, so the last question on this topic, right, is do you think this generation has lost the meaning of love because social media connects us to so many people? Like, for instance, growing up, 
our, our parents, right? Like, let's just say my parents are from Haiti. They grew up in the island. They grew up in the village, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a couple of females you saw in the village, but at the same time, it's just like, it was it. So my pops chose my mom. There's probably a few other females around that he like stuff like that. But the the numbers that you was looking at mm -hmm. was limited. It was stuck to that neighborhood, that village. But now because of social media, right. every day it's a bad, different chick. Facebook even say, females you may know. It's a chick with her ass <laughs> hanging out and stuff like that. So then now it's just like... Accept it. <laughs> but you, but it's a trap. Don't do it. it. But you know what I'm saying? Like, now you're introduced to so many different people. Right. Like, now there's a fine dude who lives in Wisconsin who like everything that you like you would have never met before, but social media said that y'all had do 20, 30 mutual friends. Mm -hmm. So do you think, because social media has now made us think, like, you know, we always knew the saying there's so many many fish in the sea, but now social media lets you actually see, like, All damn, shorty in Germany, she looked popping and stuff like that, we kicking it off. It makes the world kind of reach out and touch. So do you think that makes us... Like, stay committed to love less because we feel like there's so many more options out there. There's always been options, but now we see it, right? We see options. Um, it all depends on the person because um, once I'm in a relationship, um, it's very hard. I'm not, I don't have temptation and stuff like that. If I'm in love with you, I'm in love with you. Like, I have tunnel vision. So a guy could request me and he could be sexy and everything, but I really don't care. Like, it doesn't matter to me. But then you have your weak individuals who... They see an ass, and it's like, all right, let me message this person, and let me see what this person is about. Like, because you see some ass, now all of a sudden you giving in to what? Because, like, like, why think are you of, risking your think relationship? Think about it. Instagram, mm -hmm. DMs, yeah. being in people's inbox and stuff right. like that. These are people you've never met before in your life who looks damn good. It Doesn't makes you feel like, man, like, you know, it makes people feel less like, yo, this situation is good, but there's always shorty in the DM. Are you trying to say the grass is greener off. on the other side? It makes the grass appear mentality. to be greener. What do you think? Do you think it makes our generation value love a little less because we feel like you there's know, so many options it, it, out there? It, it definitely makes our generation value a little less because back in the days when our parents, were, there was no, oh, I could go on Facebook, I could go on Instagram and stuff. You had to be really, you really had to love that person or... Only reason, only way you're gonna be be social like that is if you're going out, you know, or, or going to certain events. Social media is definitely killing the love part because people don't want to work. I think social people media and music too. Is social media it. is killing love because people don't want to work anymore. It, it, the working part, the working part of being in love is is over now. So explain that, expand upon that. What do you mean, like you know, social media be like, you know, I I made sure the my woman crush Monday, so now she should know. She's important, and I don't have to show more effort. Than no, that. And like, like for for example, right? With certain certain people's social media, you look at it, you like, come on, man, what's going on here? You know, what I'm saying? like from the outside, you like, what's going on there? This person is in a relationship, and he's just doing certain things. You like, come on, like my social media, and not to put myself out there. Most of the time, you see my social media is me and my family, me and my wife, right? Me and my daughter. Me and my family. Because that's me, your real life. Me and my that's bros life. hanging out. Which you call it. I'm not putting stuff that, that's going to put myself in a situation, right? So social media, a lot of guys will do certain things that put themselves in situations. Even if they're I in a I compliment, though. Am I wrong for no, 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 no. Compliment is cool. If she has a nice picture, I might say, oh, girl, you looking good, sis. You looking good, sis. Because I want to be respectful because I don't know if you have a man. If I go, damn, my man, you looking sexy as hell. Your man might call you because of social media. Like, yo, who's who's Cliff Brock Bonham? What's going on here? That's why me when, when I when I when I message or say something to certain people, if it's I'm like, you looking good, sis, or keep it up, sis, because that that's that's basically I'm being respectful to the situation. Mm -hmm. Social media You're could do a lot just of like things. Right now in your life, like you actually give compliments and stuff like that or whatever. Yeah, just right now, but social media can damage can damage love. Period. Oh yeah, we know definitely social media, you know, plays a big part of. And then, and then a lot apart. of people a lot of people feel like they ain't gotta work no more because they got five hundred likes. You in a relationship, but you got five hundred likes. You like. He acting now. He don't know two uh, two hundred thirty three dudes already hit me up talking about this. Oh, he, he don't even know what's going down. So you, that's that's what I'm saying. So you, it could social, social media, social media even makes us feel like we have more options. Of course, which makes of the course. love and commitment feels like you know people feel like 
you know, this uh, exit plan. You know what I'm saying? People got backups and stuff like that. Of course. You know, especially like like you said, sometimes you get 250 likes. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, I know you get a lot of likes. You know, sometimes you got your Baywatch pictures out there looking, you know, <laughs> oh, Pamela Anderson and stuff like that. So I know the love Social comes Social media there. is good when you keep it at good fun, communicating with people. Right. Networking, if that's what you're into. But if you're in a committed relationship and you're doing stuff that that shows you have no respect for your relationship, you got to be careful. We all slipped up that one or two times like, hold on, maybe I shouldn't have did this, whatever. But now you got to look at social media. Anything you put out, if you got a thousand friends, 700 people might see it. Mm-hmm. You never know. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta, it's, it's very important to so respect. Before I leave this topic, do you think there's anything this generation can do to value love more? Because social media, like I said, just makes us feel like we got more options than we do. <sighs> um, I'm gonna let the. I'm gonna let the of course, yeah. You yeah, I gotta go first, first right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. dang. Okay, you know what? I want him to go first because that's all right. You, so yeah. What, what could we do as a generation to value love more? And, and ignore the quote unquote being popping on social media and having so many options and, and likes and stuff like that where it invites certain energy to us. You know what I'm saying? What can we do like as to value love more? To value love more. Um in the social media generation, you know? And I mean, we can also like it might sound funny, but you can you can get advice from older people that's not involved in social media. That doesn't Be- sound funny. No, no, no that's a no, good no, answer. Good. That's a good you answer. You get advice from older people that's not involved in social media because you can't get somebody, you can't get advice with somebody with social media and you look at their social media and they love their self. Some people love their self on social media. Yeah. Like, you know, but so. they love their self outside of social media. Yeah, that that's too, a whole but other show. That, that's I know. Another, that's no, but another. I agree but, with you. Hope. Go, finish, go ahead. You could get advice from older uh, other person that can tell you that's not involved in social media because now you can get some ideas of okay how do I go into the situation it's very important like it's very very important to take good advice and good criticism from somebody who's advanced and wise Mm -hmm. right so if that person's not in social media you know what sometimes social like some of my friends and family that's not in social media say I don't want to be involved in that because that's a whole nother world that's going to make my situation that Mm -hmm. I don't need and you can get advice from that person because you're like, you know what? Because you might be involved in that, but you need to know how to get out, right? Mm-hmm. So you get that advice from the outsider. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. But my thing, too, about social media, you put everything out there that you want to be seen. Mm-hmm. So when people say, oh, it brings trouble, what's the trouble that it brings? If you want to put the trouble out there, you're putting it out there. You're laying it there for everyone to see. Yeah. I mean, you know what? To me, is to me, social media is fun, but... You said something strong, like, you know, getting advice from people who's not on social media yeah. on, on how they approach love. I think love. it's very important. It is important because you got to think about it. A- as a man, when you have, like, problems and troubles and your friends are all, quote, unquote, popping on social media and stuff, they'd be like, yo, dog, man, there's a lot of chicks out here. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Their advice to you is never really, like, work on your situation. It's just like, yo, if that's not working out, Move look on. at all these <laughs> other options. But when you speak to an older soul, it's just like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you're going to go through things and stuff like that. You got a good woman in your corner. Stick by stick by her side, you know. Work on improving that situation because you could go out there and chase other things. But you fall in love with her facade. It's an image. Like you said, you put out there on social media what you want to see. Mm. So, yeah, Shorty's cute and stuff like that. You don't know Shorty's crazy. You don't exactly. know her bed is no, no, no box spring. It's on the floor. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You exactly. know, but you just like that cute-ass selfie. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... I'm going to move on to the next topic. The next topic is kind of spicy, right? And oh. it's called sexuality, right? With, uh, Let's talk no, about some spicy shit. No, but, you know, <laughs> sexuality. <laughs> my question about sexuality is like, you know, we're so caught up in what everybody's doing in their bedroom mm-hmm. and, and things like that. Like, for instance, in the episode, uh, uh, last week episode, I talked about how creepy R. Kelly is. And it kind of bothers me. But, you know, that doesn't necessarily <laughs> define his sexuality or how he rec- you recognize himself. I'm more, I more want to talk about how we're approaching the situation where we view people for having certain sexualities. Like, for instance, the Bobby Valentino situation. Mm. Everybody's getting on this case and he knew that was a transgender. He has a history of rocking with transgenders and things like that. Mm. And, you know, a lot of celebrities have been caught, you know, 
with transgenders, even back to you know Eddie Murphy giving the ride in the limo to a transgender well, saying Teddy Pendergrass too. Teddy right? Pendergrass, that whole thing. Yeah, so, Teddy P was into that. So why are we so caught up with people's sexualities? Like if I find out somebody's gay, uh-huh. it, you know, I was talking about this last night. It surprises you sometimes, like if someone put out a certain image of being straight or a ladies' man, you find out they're gay. It shocks me, like oh, I didn't see it. But then I'm like, I want to move on. But people harp on people's sexuality. People get like, oh, you know, people get religious about it. People mm-hmm. get passionate. So I'm like, why do we care so much about other people's sexuality? I'm gonna let Clifford go first. And then... Oh, okay. Oh, no, go ahead, wow, Cliff. that's you know, it's tough. Like, and because some people are not secure or confident in themselves. Okay. So they're looking for the answers. They're looking for answers from other people. Like You, you think they want cosigns to be comfortable? Because they, my, they want to be cosigns to be comfortable. Like, I don't have no problem. Listen, I don't have no problem with gay people, straight people, or whatever. It doesn't bother me. Whatever, whatever you do in your bedroom, that's on you, what you call it. But if you're trying to enforce it on me, that's a whole different situation. So people I've are not had comfortable. arguments in like, the past. Like, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Not to bring You're up, not, not to, not to, not to, not to bring up the whole Bruce Jenner thing, right? I feel like this is just my opinion. It's okay. We this all my opinion, to right? No one's the Bruce Jenner thing, right? At sixty-five years old, he wants to. I thought it was kind of late, he, but you know, he, what? He, listen, it's he, something he, he held on for a he, while. He held on for a while. He did that, right? I I don't care about he, him doing that. It's yeah. just I don't respect it at sixty-five. I could respect. When no, would you respect it when he's forty? I know I could respect it. Mm-hmm. In from eighteen to like thirty, that's when that's when you period like okay, you trying to figure it out. But see, he's he sixty five though, so repressed. like if we do his calculation back no. in the day, it would have been harder for him to come out. Yeah. So maybe that's why but he held so for long for him to get the ash. Well, that's a whole another story. He's <laughs> getting all these awards and what you call it. Uh, people, yeah, that, that people, ash for courage. That's for courage. That's, 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 that's a whole another story. Yeah. But I think people's because people are not confident in themselves, so they they trying to figure it out. Like, yo, what you think about this? What yeah. you think about this? A lot of people are not confident. So when you're confident in yourself, you wouldn't care who you're around. I don't care if I'm around a transgender, yeah. a gay person, because I know I know myself, and that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, I feel like um, society has made it harder for people to come out. So let's just say if Bobby Valentino did like transgenders, that's his business. It doesn't bother me. I love Bobby Valentino. I was always a fan from him since Mister. And like he was always Blackberry, my favorite one. Molasses. That album was dope. I like but, that song. Um, <laughs> his it, music's good. Yeah. It, like Frank Ocean, remember when he came out and yeah. stuff like that. I think that a lot of people are scared to come out because of all of the criticism that they would receive. Mm-hmm. So he could have been into tran- transgenders 10 years ago. We don't know. But now mm-hmm. he got caught. And, I mean, for me, I feel like it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't... I'll still listen to your music. Mm. Uh, that's your personal life. I don't care what you do. Like, sexuality, to me, is like, you know, is how someone chooses to be, one, identified, and two, how they choose to be loved. So, some, like, for instance, Bobby Valentino, even um, the DJ. Mr. C. Mr. C. Mr. C. Mr. C. He's been caught with, caught. Stay getting caught with your genders, and he said something like, you know, he played I'm not, the, he I'm played not the best gay. music. I know. I'm <laughs> not gay. I just like to get oral sex from transgenders sometimes. That's a very ambiguous comment. But I say that to say this. Why are we so caught up? We're so caught up in people's um, sexualities that we, we make people's lives miserable. P- not our lives, yeah. other people's lives miserable because of the judgment and the pressure we put on it. And, and, and that's why all this down low activity is going on. And I want to answer something you said, like you hate when it's being forced upon yourself. I, uh, some people say there's a, like a gay agenda out there to like force homosexuality. There's no such thing as media. forcing homosexuality. Exactly. It's either you're gay or you're not no, gay, but, but, and that's but, it. You people, can't force me to be gay. No, like, but people are saying <laughs> that there's an agenda to turn people gay because it's like a propaganda kind of thing because of advertising and things like that. And I'm just like, I said this, I said this on social media, and people were like, I'm telling you, tearing me to pieces. Like, oh, oh you'll get torn into pieces. You, 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 uh, the gay mafia got to you. I'm like, they didn't get to me. I'm still straight. <laughs> I'm not doing nothing in the corner. But the, just like how um, commercials, right? Before in the commercials, you know, the older generations was upset when they started seeing black people mm-hmm. in the commercials. Okay. And now we're starting to see gay families in the commercials, right? Because businesses is just like, yo, 
no matter who you sleep with or who you like, mm -hmm. you spend money, we want you to spend money. Right. So the gay crowd, the transgender crowd, things like that, you know, people are marketing to them because there's a market for them to be like, you know what? I want to feel like a regular person. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the sex sexuality thing is I don't judge because I don't want to be judged. I just don't feel like why. I, I still don't understand why we care so much. Like, you know, it don't affect me. Right. What, what you're doing in your bedroom and stuff like that, how, how does that affect me? It doesn't. It doesn't. So why do we put so much, especially as people of color, is, you know, me being a Haitian man, a Caribbean man, and stuff like that, homosexuality is so, so shunned that people literally get killed and and are, are sometimes are isolated to certain parts of the community, like the, all the gay people could only live here if you're openly gay. Like, that's crazy, that's especially crazy. how we fight for equality. You know what I'm saying? Right. So why do you think, I, I guess... I'm a person of color, so I see it more. But why do you think it's so rough in the people in our communities as people of color? Mm. <sighs> oh, this is. Um... I'm gonna let you go first. first. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna let me go first, right? Ladies first. Um, go back to something that you said. It's so crazy how you said some people are getting killed because of their sexuality. It's funny because some of the people that are doing the killing are gay too, but they don't want to say anything. Yeah, they want to be like, okay, I'm not gay. I'm a kill. Like, I insecure. Yeah, insecure. people not confident. That's like what I first said. Go ahead. But... So, um, I don't know. I, this is a very, very touchy, very, very touchy subject. Um, like, 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 if if I could just give an answer to that, what kind of, and this is another thing I got torn apart, right? Because I was just like, you know, as oppressed people, you know what I'm saying? Speaking of African, as African American or people, black people in general, it's like we've been oppressed and we're still being oppressed in certain ways. We're still being targeted for certain crimes and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. to me, it's just like, you know, how do I protest? Like, you know, what they're killing our black boys and stuff like that. And then at the same token, be like, well, they killed that transgender last week. I don't care because he was weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's just like I don't want anyone to be oppressed. I don't want people to be targeted because of who they are. So if, I'm, if I don't want to be targeted as a black person, and people are always going to say, oh, being black and being transgender or being gay is not the same thing. It's not the same thing. But it's the, I'm talking about the attitude and the action that you have. If you don't want people to, be op to oppress you, why be so open to oppress another group? You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like saying, it's the politics. It's sort of like saying, well, you know, me being black is an oppressed group, but it's not as be it's not as bad as being gay or transgendered, so I have the right to be oppressive towards those people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's why I don't understand why people of color would turn around and be be that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, y y your attitude and energy got to reflect the change that you want to see. So we got to be more open and supportive of our own people, but at the same time, if we don't want no kind of oppression towards us, we shouldn't be so openly oppressing other people. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. That's a fact. So, 100%. So, the people of color thing, do you think it's our religion, like, you know, our religious, you know, upbringing sometimes that cause us? Because, you know, if the Bible has the, you know, the sayings of, you know, homosexuality mm -hmm. and, and lie and, you know, the fire and all that kind I of stories, do you think that makes it? I think it's religion. It's the home bringing. It's it's the conversations growing up as a kid. It's the MTV do, does it a lot, right? Yeah. MTV started putting out gay next. Mm -hmm. So now, now you you making people confused because now they gotta have these conversations with their kids like, um, that don't know what's going on. If they watch, if your kid is watching MTV and he see a gay next, and now he now you're a dad or your mom and you gotta explain that to somebody, somebody. Who who do, doesn't got time for that or don't don't want to explain that is gonna be mad, automatic frustrated. I can't believe they're doing this. They're putting this gay stuff. They're confusing my kid. Those are the conversations they're gonna have, right? Yeah. So it's like everything plays a part, you know. It plays a part. And it's I'm all, straightforward with my kids. And but everything plays a part, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's the community, your upbringing, how you carry yourself. Those all play a part of it. And then like like. Even social media, TV, those all play a big part. So it's it's it sometimes sometimes it could just be forced upon you to um, 
to be as a, something negative, mm-hmm. the transgender, gay, or anything, where it's nothing wrong with being gay. There's nothing wrong with being transgender. transgender. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's like the converse sometimes is being forced on certain people where they don't want it. They don't want that energy. I have problem. I you have understand? problem with the, the term understand. of being forced. Right? I was going to say, I need an example it's an exposure. of being forced. It's not, it's not like someone's locking you in the room and saying, look, right. now, you okay. got to come take I this need wood. Example of this okay. You know what I'm saying? Give me an example okay. of this. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'm using the wrong word. Force? No, but he used Expose. it too. Didn't you say force? Too? No, 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 no. I mean, maybe, okay, expose. But I was speaking against people saying that it's being oh, okay. forced upon you or, or there's some nothing kind of agenda. Be no, no, nothing could be forced on you, but it's definitely being exposed okay. with social media. And it's, it's, it's exposure. Some, it's it's definitely an in, increase in it's exposure. It's something that they're trying to make it like. But I, I feel people, people, it's, it's not an agenda of necessarily changing people or converting people like how sometimes there's a religious agenda. It's exposure. It's a market. It's an untapped it's market. It's definitely a market. Yeah. Like some, some businesses used to not care about black people at all till they started doing the studies like, yo, black people spend more money than they make. I want them to spend some of that money over here. That's a fact. You know what I'm That's saying? That's a fact. Tran- the transgendered homosexuality community, you know, there's a lot of people of influence and power who belong to that community. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like fashion. Not to be stereotypical, but there's a lot of high level of homosexuality in fashion, right? Mm -hmm. So then it started to be like, you know what? We got to embrace these people because they're the power makers in this industry. Yeah, 100%. And they they, they have the, um, you know, the voice in the community, so we got to embrace them. Expose, yeah. Expose is a better word. But, you know, to get back to the people of color thing, right? I think they did a study. Don't quote me. There was like, uh, there was 15 public uh, transgender killings in a certain period, and nine out of the 15 were people, were black transgender people. Okay, I so, lost a very close friend of mine who, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I say that to like, you know, why in our community mm-hmm. it's even worse than other communities? Because, I'm going to answer that, because in our community, our upbringing, we live, we, we, it, we're, it's, we're supposed to be set at a certain standard, right? Our upbringing and which going, it's not accepted that easily. Mm-hmm. So when we see it, we like, what's going on here? You know, and and, 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 a, and a lot of people are not open minded enough to it. Like, okay, we all are we, we finding these killers? Is the question? Is it a serial? You know how you have a serial killer that just kills trans ge- transgender? And, and that's the thing because this community is so, you know, close minded. Not in a close mind, but the community is viewed so such in taboo mm-hmm. that they don't close these cases. Do you think that's what it is? Because they don't put the re- right because it's like, let me tell you, and I, I I I hope this doesn't get taken out of context. Right? Someone has said the reason why it's not a big deal for a black man to be killed by police and people are going crazy mm-hmm. because to them it doesn't affect enough people. You know what I'm saying? The majority of this country, right? Black people make up 13% of the 100% of this country. So you got to figure out, if it's only happening to these people, it's like, it don't, it don't, it's not my problem, right? That's never going to happen to me. People can't never put themselves in their shoes to say that's going to happen to me. If more, you know, Caucasian males were being shot by police mm-hmm. at a higher number, it's, it'll be an epidemic, right? Because more people be like, yo, that could be my son. Why, why, when you see someone of color get killed, you always, and you're a person of color, you'll be like, man, that could have been us. I always say, like, you know, I see someone dressed a certain way, I dress down. You know, during, during the work week, you got to dress a certain way. In the weekend, you dress down and stuff like that. If a cop identifies a person who looks a certain way and say, I'm going to target him because he looked that way, mm-hmm. that could be me too because I look that way. The transgender thing, how many people be like, you know, I relate to that transgender person and make outrage of it? You know what I'm saying? So when it don't affect your backyard, you kind of just be like, damn, that's messed up. And that's, then you move that's on. That's 100%. Okay. So you never hear someone saying, like, when the transgender stuff like that, you always hear, like, you know what, if the person in court, they're going to be charged for a hate crime and stuff like that. But it's never energy put into it like that. Yeah. Hmm. I, I, like I said, I think it's the community, our upbringing, and how certain people are raised. So they, they, they see certain things, and then, like, this is how it's supposed to be. Why is this going on? And they don't. They're not, they're not, they don't take the time to say, you know what? I, well, we don't really it. know how 
and why these people are getting killed. Do we really know that they're getting killed because they're transgender or they're just getting killed because they're just a, a murder case? Like, you don't know. Like, not do we really? That's why I said, do we know yeah. where they're ser- if they're a serial that's killers? That's why or they not? always put the disclaimer we really don't out. Know. They just could be a transgender was, person that got murdered. Like, we don't was, know if it's because they're transgender. Yeah, but that that's, the, that's, that's the extra caveat they put in there, right? If it was done because of that, it's a hate crime. And they'll add more time to it right. if they can prove that. But sometimes it's just like, we don't oh, know what, if Until we know what it is, we can't really say, oh, okay, well, they got murdered because they were transgender. Yeah. Yeah. They could have been walking down the street and got shot. Like, you know what I mean? It could be anything. Yeah, that's true. And but, some of them, they look so good, you don't even know they're transgender. So you just got murdered. There's, like, there's two things that they put out there. They said that, you know, one, these people, uh, these people, that sounds so... Crazy, yeah. but you know, <laughs> trans, trans, the transgender and gay community sometimes are so, you know, outliers in their community that people aren't looking for them. You know, they they're estranged from their family, and also like you know, these people are working in certain um, kind of jobs. You know, what I'm saying like you know, like bizarre jobs. You know, sex related jobs, prostitutes, uh, you know, stripping things like that. The other day. That. So, so they're saying like you know, it's these. It, it's just like this. Like another, another sad thing, right? If there was a serial killer going around killing homeless people, uh huh, which happens, that which happens, happen. right? People would be like outraged, but at the same time, it's gonna be like, well, you know, we don't really concentrate on the homeless people like that. So then it's kind of like, who, who's, who's reporting these killings? They, they say a majority of transgender killing and stuff like that, mm-hmm. they become John Doe, Jane Doe. You know what I'm saying? People don't identify this person. People aren't looking for this person. You know what I'm saying? It's like you killing people under the radar. I just think it's weird that we in the in the um, black community like are so scared of the, the sexuality to be identified. Like sometimes people joke and say because call me gay or something like that. And I just laugh like, you know, I'm far from gay. And then I don't have to the prove way myself. Everyone is nowadays. If you say you're gay, some people don't want to talk to you and stuff like that or you'll get a lot of criticism. And that's the it's reason why it is right the now. way it is. So people yeah. are scared to come out and like I said about Bobby Valentino, okay, so if he likes trend, I don't care. Like yeah. But he's probably would you'd be scared to come out because your whole reputation is gonna be messed up and stuff like that. So I mean, yeah, people are scared to come out. Yeah. So do you think? Um, last question is: Do you think sexuality is a new way people, a new uh, vehicle to oppress people? Like you know, what I'm saying like you know what, I'm going to be able to like differentiate myself from these people by sexuality because I'm straight. I'm better than someone who's gay or homosexual or I'm more of the, you know, the norm. So since they're not, quote, unquote, normal, I'm going to be oppressive towards them. Do you think it's a vehicle that people are using to oppress people? Crack at it. I'm going to give that to you right now. <laughs> like, so, so I to, don't, uh, to make the question simpler, like these transgenders that are being killed uh, in our community, mm-hmm. right? Why do you think it's so easy for people to get away with killing a transgender person? I, 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 I'll answer the question. I think it's so easy for people to get away with the transgender killing because people are not willing to accept it and, and accept it that easily. So, so people, so when it happens, it's not like it's not like you killing a regular person to them. If when they're not see, that's them. that's the problem. But that's true though. Did I say something? I know, I'm looking at you like I'm about to cut your neck, right? <laughs> because there yeah, are regular people. No, yeah. but listen, listen, it, listen. It, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a t- it's me, one of those let terms let me, let me like finish, regular. Let me What's regular? Let me, but, exactly. But ahead, that's why I was like, no, 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 but, but go, ahead. go ahead. It's not, the people look at it as like, it's not like you're killing a regular person. So people like, what you call Some people, when you, when you talk about transgender or gay, people, certain, especially there's some, I'm not going to say all. Sometimes it's automatic views as something negative, mm-hmm. and, and and because we were talking about the black community, that's right. Mm-hmm. So so it's viewed as negative in the black community. So when that happens, you like, I'm gonna be honest, it's like, fuck it, I don't give a fuck about him. Be, He's a homo anyway. But you understand? Yeah. But then that's it, harsh. Let's, 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 but, let's, go that, ahead. That, no, that's go harsh, ahead. but it's reality. Yeah. But then also, if you know that Kevin who got killed, you are like, yo man, Kevin was a good dude. He, he worked, he went to school, he went to that. 
But you found like Alex got killed. Alex was transgender. Like, hey, fuck Alex. That nigga was doing homo but, shit but, anyway. But, but that's but that's that's why that's why that's what happens. All, all I want to say is right. That that's the same attitude when it's just like you are in the comments of when when a black guy, guy die and then you hear. Well, he should have listened to the cops anyway. <laughs> That's the same yeah, attitude. But listen, it's the same but attitude. Listen, the, 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 the attitude, the attitude what, what I said, is, is definitely the same attitude. But this is what's going on, and this is how people feel. See, the, and that's why, and that's why I just said, let me let me take a crack at it and the answer, right? You see how automatically I just gave you these examples, and then everybody got full of rage. Like, hold on, what's going <laughs> on? Here? It's, it's all love in the room. But it's simple. I didn't get full of rage. <laughs> <laughs> you said regular. Hold on, hold on, and I was like, hold on, I said regular. <laughs> she gave me the I, side neck. I, 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 I waited for you at listen, the door. I said regular. You gave me one of those. And then I, I was like, did I say something wrong here? <laughs> but because. that's how, but you see how the energy happens? Yeah, yeah. I just gave that as an example. Yeah. This is not what I'm thinking. Or what we know that's Those not what you're thinking. We know that's what you're thinking. But, but that's just how people think. Mm-hmm. When they don't, like you said, when they don't affect your backyard or what you call it like that, you don't care. That's crazy. So do you do we... care when it affects, like, if a transgender was murdered, does it affect you in any way? How do you feel about it? I It, it affects me because I feel like, man, you know, Especially if it's proven mm-hmm. that, the, first of all, all, all loss of lives affect me. You know what I'm saying? But when you hear certain exactly. stories, when you hear certain stories, it's just like, when you hear about the transgender being killed, and then it's just like, you know, I, when you get details, right, when it's just like, man, like, not to say, this is going to be like the regular comment. Like, if you find I'm out that... cut those eyes No, no. You. you found out a transgender got killed because... He he tricked the he tricked the heterosexual male into thinking he was a woman, and the heterosexual male found out that he was a transgender and he killed him. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, that was wrong. But then I also be like, yo, that guy got put into a situation he didn't know how to handle. So then I also, the even though the the guy who killed him is the um uh, you know, the murderer, I also kind of have sympathy for him because it's just like, yo, no one wants to be tricked into a situation like that. That's the only time where it's weird. But when it's just like, you know, this transgender person was walking down the block minding their own business, and then someone decides to kill them, it hurts me a lot because, to me, that's the equivalent of being black in the wrong neighborhood. You was just black, and all of a sudden, you get into a fight with a white person or a person of another nationality, or the cops mess with you. It's like, that's wrong because that's just the person being who they are. Okay. But if the transgender is just an activity where they're kind of tricking someone, Tricking I, someone in general, no matter if you're straight, gay. Yeah, yeah, but it, it, it kind of it kind of escalates. It's messed up. It's messed yeah, up. It kind of escalates. It's not right. It, it isn't right. It's not yeah. right. But yeah. you got to answer the question. You you converted it to back to. Oh, what's the question again? Can we can we repeat this we, question? We kind of we. So do you <laughs> do you? Wow, we've asked we went to so many different topics since then. But it's like, do you think? Um, the oppressing people by their sexuality is like a new thing. You know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, you know, people are being oppressed or targeted from their sexuality and people are saying that it's okay. Like, it's okay to be a bully towards a gay or transgender. It's okay to target kind of thing. Do you think that's something that's growing? Um, Do I think it's something that's growing? Uh, Yeah. And once again, it brings us back to social media. How? How? How, How so? How sway? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, um, we're, we're being exposed to everything. Like I said before, I feel like um, all of all of the sexuality situations and stuff, it's always been there. It, it was always there. It's just that we have a social media avenue to bring it out. Mm-hmm. So, so now more exposure. More exposure. And it's making more people uncomfortable, and that's why things are happening this I way. I mean, it's hard for me to really answer this question because it doesn't make me uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So that's th- why I'm struggling with this question. Yeah. It's, I it's think okay in the future I'm like, going to have care. to try to find a transgender person and have an interview with them to have I this I think you should. I think yeah. you should. So because we're running low on time, I want to introduce the last topic and see if we could, you know, at least get some good a couple of minutes on this last topic. And it's my brother, my sister's keeper, right? So I feel like... Overall, I feel like black men and black women are kind of being pinned against each other. You know what I'm saying? There's always like, well, the black woman's wrong because she does, she's after money, she's materialistic, BS, BS. Or the black man is wrong because the black man. How much man, time we got? 
<laughs> black black man is lustful, so he's always chasing ass and stuff like that. He don't appreciate the black woman's beauty. Ooh. He's chasing after the white woman's beauty or another nationality beauty and stuff like that. So the question is, why does it feel like society is pushing up black men and black women against each other? How many how many minutes do we have? We'll, we'll try to keep min- ten, answers to two minutes because minutes? we're coming close to the end of the time. All right, this is a very crazy subject. First of all, um. I'm for mixed races and everything. I don't, you know, um, it's okay. It's yeah. okay to date outside your race. Mm-hmm. Um, pushing against each other, I think that is, that's been hap- happening since slavery time when it comes to the lighter people being in the house to the Negroes picking cotton. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, that's just the way it is. Um, so do you think it stems from them? Because I, I feel like even now. I think it stems from now, that, definitely. F- forget about just color like of course you know beauty standards sometimes license instead of more pretty with dusk and that's another conversation but i just feel like you know well that's I, a form of them fighting against the, well not fighting but pushing against each yeah. other but i'm just saying that's why i feel like it generated as well but mm-hmm. keep going yeah I, I just i just i just don't feel like it's put out there how like we're building each other up i feel like it's more like we're competing against each other to be like you know like i never really see white men compete against white women kind of thing. The way that black men are competing against black women kind of thing for like their relevance, their I want, voice. I want to answer that question. Go ahead. Because that's true, that what you said about white women competing with um, white, a, black, a white woman competing with a white man, a white man competing with a white woman. It's mm-hmm. very true. The thing about it is, it's, and, and this might sound sexist too. So. Oh boy, so, he's looking at me too. Yeah. Like talking to the mic. Yeah. Yeah. It might sound to sexist like... too, but it's it's. Go ahead. Instead of saying to yourself, "When's the last time? When's the last time you heard a sister say, you know, I got a good man? He take care of the kids. He pay the bills.' I just heard that yesterday. Hold, hold I went on. to a reception hold yesterday. On, hold on, uh-huh. I'm talking about aspect appreciating the black man. I don't think we hear it enough. We don't hear, we don't, we there, don't, we don't, we don't, listen, listen, we don't hear it enough where in our culture we appreciate each other. Sisters and brothers. And that's, that's the reason why we always up against each other. We hear the dragon part. The dragon part. Mm-hmm. Oh, he not doing this, he not doing that, he not doing that. We never hear the uplifting part. If we had the uplifting part with both parties, it wouldn't be a problem. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. It's always negative when it comes to that situation. It's never positive. It doesn't start off positive. When's the last time you heard a bunch of sisters talk about how great their man is and they're doing everything right? Okay. When's the, hold on. When's the last time you... <laughs> listen, listen. When's the last time you heard a bunch of men going on... And I'm not talking about one or two. 10, 15 guys in a row talking about, yo, I got a great woman at home on social media just expressing how good everything is. Well, the only thing that gets shown on in social media is I got a baby mother who's taking me for child support. This is not I got, true. I got, it's I got, the stereotypes listen, that get stereo- pushed out listen, there, though. It's the stereotypes that box us in with and, men and with, 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 with our, our culture, period, that box us in to make everything seem negative in the situation. I, I wanna if hear. you have two people post a status, so you have one per- person post, oh, okay, I'm in love, I love my wife, da 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 Then you have another guy that posts, oh, this bitch get on my nerves, this, that, and third. Which status is going to attract the you the most? The nerves is going to be mad reactions. The bitch reactions. getting on your nerves is going to attract you the most. But so look what you, you just, look what 50, just said. I'm going to tell you. The negative, right? They're not the the negative, finish, but people finish. are attractive to the negative. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to see this shit. They want to see people argue and fight. You don't But really, that's what build us But not every Everybody, but, but some that's what people build us against each other. That's but what it all depends saying. on who you surround your, yourself with. I like to surround myself with positive, positive people. Energy. Positive energy. Like you guys are deeply in love with your wives. That's a beautiful thing. You have to want to be around people like you guys. I don't want to be around a guy. First of all, that's considered calling his girlfriend a bitch. But I don't want to be around someone with that negative energy. I want to be around people who have beautiful relationships, beautiful families, and stuff like that. It all depends on the individual. But like you said, the negative energy part, that's the reason People why are attracted to negative. People, a lot of that, people, but that's not what everyone. put us against each other like that. You understand? Yeah, like, it boxes it in. Like, like to that. me, it's, um, it's, there's so many social social economical in, uh, factors as well when mm-hmm. you think about it how how much more black women are educated than black men black women are the most educated w- women in this whole country per like having degrees and educational certifications like that I say that to say this I feel like an educated black women sometimes 
is is put into a place where she feels like she can't deal with a man who's not up to her standards. And then the black man feels inferior sometimes or, you know, his uh, ego is hurt because his woman makes more money than him. So he goes around and just like, you know, he knew that before he got with her. But I I, I just feel like, you know, this dynamic is, is so rampant in our community and you don't hear us talking about like bigging each other up more than enough or getting together and building businesses as a black man and the black woman coming together to do these things. I feel like we're just placed in a box to compete against each other. Like I, I'm the, I, as a black person who's, who's shining, mm-hmm. I need to be the only person who's shining. And then for some but, black men, their trophy is to get a white but, woman in their arm once they're in that elite place. It's, listen, I'm going to answer that question also. It's the lack of respect for each other. A lot of the times now, we... Why we, don't we respect each other? I agree with you, but why don't we respect each other? It's the lack of other? respect of each other. I, I, I can't answer it from a woman's perspective, but I can answer it from a man's perspective. Like, once... Listen, the, once the respect factor's not there, it, always become, it becomes very negative, and that's what happens. We never... It's never where... Me and you, right? We, we both got two businesses, right? Mm-hmm. Your business is successful, my business is successful. I'm not going to say, you know what? Yo, a man is doing great things. You know, I got to I gotta tell people that I care about our business. Automatically, I'm like, man, I can't stand this chick, yo. What, what's it called? What you call it? it just, just the attitude, the mindset of what it is. Not saying that I didn't care about your business, right. but I'm automatically competing. So do we you think this stems from slavery where we had to compete against each other to be like, I'm trying to survive, so I want to be the house Negro versus the, 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 the field Negro kind of thing? It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it plays in a part of a little of everything, but it's, it's about respecting each other and, and building each other. We don't build each other. Brothers and sisters, we don't build each other. It's so easy to say why you don't like this person than to say, yo, you know what? That's a good dude. When's the last time you heard somebody somebody say um what you call it? When so we- let me make it more simplistic. Do you think black men, black women, kind of feel like there's less spots for us to shine as people of color? So that makes us more competitive towards each other. I don't. I don't know. It's hard to answer from your perspective. Yo. The, the thing about it is that I'm never in competition. I don't know, and I will always, always big up someone so yeah. it's very hard for me to yeah. relate to this i i don't know i'm not, listen like she said i'm never in competition with and somebody else never in competition which goes and it's it's not it's it's not hard for me to say oh yo, yeah you're doing your thing you know, i like what you're doing keep it up whatever boom but then you 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 it, 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 other people it, it's very hard for them to do that Sometimes, you know, they rather say seven bad things before they say seven good things, and that's what happened with men and women. You know, I'm they rather say you might say you might as well you rather, you rather say seven bad things about this man instead of saying seven good things. You, about you him. said you guys both said something interesting. Where it's I just, build, I build a black man up. No, I'm not saying. You know, <laughs> but you guys both said like, something where when I have where, a good man, I'm where, gonna be like, yo, he's a great guy. He does this. He does that. Like. I will build you up. And you know, social whether you're black you know or white or Spanish, gonna I'm going to build my guy up. You know what social media going to say? Uh, what? what you call it? What? When you, when you start taking that, they're going to be like, man, you're going to get all these comments that say, go ahead, sister. You're going to get that one comment that say, until you find out he's cheating on you. Because <laughs> she's <What>? scorned. <laughs> yeah. Now, that's a scorned yeah, woman but, right but, there. Yeah. But that's what I'm I, saying. Like, uh, it's, it's, it's a different situation. You guys both said something where it's just like, you know, it's more accepted to accept the negativity about each other yes. than, a than the positive, a fact. which I, I kind of agree. I'm just like, yeah. why is that dynamic out there? And the last question I'm going to ask in this topic is, do you think, is diversity in dating making us lose strength as a community? Like, sometimes people will feel my whole energy, my aura, my education, stuff like that, and then they see my wife and think my wife is a white woman, even though she's Spanish, and they'll... And they'll She's Puerto Rican, and they'll say, they'll kind of, like, all of a sudden, my black wave is watered down. <laughs> all of a sudden, my movement or my strength is not as strong because, like, you know what? He didn't marry a sister who's his complexion, so everything he's saying, mm, you know, I get that mm, attitude. So is diversity in dating making us weaker as a community, in your opinion? Um, no. My first love was white. So I feel like I had a lot of issues though walking down the street and mm-hmm. stuff like that mm-hmm. here and there. I don't I don't think 
No. I think it makes it weak in the community when you when you can't accept it and you're not around it and you don't know nothing about it and you're not willing to explore. See, a lot of people, a lot of times in the community, people ain't willing to, they're not willing to explore and expand to see what's going on. I, for my white wife, I used to, I listen, I used to date a lot of white women, uh-huh. white women. Hey, listen, hey, listen, I did, but honestly, and, and I, and I went through that situation where I'm like, I can't take her here. Why? I can't take Why her did there. you feel that listen, way? No, I went listen, to go listen, see for hung, color hung, girls. Hung, hung, I'm, let me, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Let me explain. I can't take her here. I can't take her there because the certain situations where I was trying to take at, they don't understand it. The first comment is, yo, yo, that, yo, that nigga clip bring you the bunny in the hood. God, not even, not even the saying, yo, okay, what you go, yo, you got the hood, you got the bunny in the hood. That's just a stereotype, and then that's the situation. Yeah. Yes, it is making the community weaker. I don't, I don't think it's making the community weaker for people to fall in love with people outside of their everyday situation. I think it's more if you're dating outside of your community, as because you think it's gonna make you a better person, it's gonna put you in a better place in life. Then your but mentality. But you, you can't fall. You can't help. If you, you still fall love, in love your, with. yeah, exactly. But you if you still love you your community, love you still want to upbring your community. Sometimes it doesn't matter who you are with. Right. But they also say, and I have to agree that you know you have to be sometimes the example of the change that you want to see. So sometimes you do need to see a positive black couple to continue to grow the strength of the community. Yeah. So that is the end of the show. We're, we're out of time, but it was a great show. Amanda, you was a great guest. I'd like to give you guys a chance to like do a shout out before we, we close out the show. Oh, okay. So I usually don't I don't do shout outs, but um I would like to say maybe we should serve some cheese and wine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have some little snacky snacks. Okay. I, I, <laughs> no, I, I, I you know what? This is a, a new new show for me, so I will take all the um <laughs> No, I'm just greedy, that's why I'm saying <laughs> recommendations. Not just a bottle of water, but have snacks and stuff like that. What, what about you? Um, I wanna shout out just family and friends and then shout out all the people with good energy and good vibes. And also shout out my big brother whose birthday's coming up. Yeah, shout out and to then, you. Thank you. I appreciate shout it. And you know, just <laughs> keep up the great work, you know? That's right. it. So I'd like to just shout out everyone who supported the show, watching the show. Please share, comment on the videos, comment on the content because it allows me to grow new topics and have more conversations because I need the input from the people. And I'm saying shout out to uh, some of the followers who've been following tough. Shout out to my boy Keith. Shout out to my homegirl Constance. I know I'm going to forget certain people, but those are the people who I've seen comment and sharing the videos. And I just want to say we only grow by the love that we give and we reciprocate. You know what I'm saying? So as black people, you know, if we want our brands to grow, we got to support each other. We got to show that love. So that's my view for the week. Next week, oh, man. Shout out to Sensei and Bacardi Doc who wasn't here this week, but they should be back next week. I'm going to be traveling because it's my birthday. So, you know. Where you going? I'm going to New Orleans. You're going but, to the NL. But anyway, keep spreading love. Keep building each other up because you have to be my brother's keeper. You have to be my sister's keeper. All right? And that's my view for the week. Peace out, y'all. One love.